Greetings programs and welcome back to Fourville! As you can see from the big number four on the vault door and it's being ably guarded as always by Tent Guard who doesn't even get a name. He's voiced and you can talk to him and he tells you stuff but he doesn't get a name because apparently his parents hated him. Now I had uh, planned on doing the, the first thing as going to Outpost Simonja, but I thought actually we might as well talk to the mayor first while we're here, see what he has got for us. The idea I have by the way is record for about another hour, see where that gets me to. I don't want to do the whole thing in one go. Uh, oh, do I need to go on the... oh there's a top deck, okay. Yeah, I, d I don't want to record the whole thing because that would be uh, a multitude of episodes. But uh, yeah, I, I want to wet people's whistle, as it were, get people, uh, you know, give people enough to see if they'd be interested in doing it or not, rather than just like play the whole thing through. Where is he? Oh, he's there. He's lurking in the shadows. Okay. Oh, hello again. I do hope I Let's see what he has to say. Well. What can I do for you today? Uh, let's see if you have any work. Looking for more work, if you got any. Actually, there's a little something that a traveler like you would be perfectly suited for. We've got an election coming up, and I'm looking to hire a neutral potter to deliver leaflets to undecided voters. Uh huh. What do you say? Uh, it sure. Sounds great. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Here's a stack of leaflets and a list of undecided voters. You're gonna. What be does me being neutral have to do with the? I don't quite understand that but okay <laughs> does he think people will uh, think the endorsement from a total stranger that's just worried uh, wandered in will uh, count for something I don't know I don't know what he thinks but anyway deliver the leaflets to undecided voters Thanks for the leaflet, but I already got one of these from Miss McKinsey's campaign, and I think I'm going to vote for her. But fair enough. Oh, I see. This starts us off talking to the hey there. opponent Thanks, that's uh, running against him for mayor. I'm sure you will. He, he said that in such a convincing way. Excuse me. Hey there. I hope this helps me make up my mind. This election is so complicated. And is there someone upstairs, I guess? Oh, someone in the bunkhouse. If there's any weird noises, he shouldn't, he shouldn't pick him up too much. But yeah, Sammy is in his position on the desk behind my microphone at the moment. So, yeah, we'll see. Don't pull the microphone over, Samuel. Just, just don't. Got my eye on you, sir. Right, where's this person? Thanks. I'll give it a read. Okay. Return to the mayor. Well, this is a super complicated one. <laughs> but, you know, it's introducing the political landscape, I guess. We'll learn a bit more about uh, what these various people's uh, politics are. I almost wish I had the jetpack so I could just like hop straight up there, but sadly I don't have the, um, what is it you need, like a science level 4 or an armourer 4 or something like that to get the jetpack. Which I am aiming for because it's fun to have the jetpack when you've got your power on. Samuel, you're not helping, no. No, I know you think you're helping, but you're not. Anyway, it's some free XP, as it were, or some... Not particularly onerous XP. That's wonderful news. Thank you. Here's a small reward for your efforts. Since you've done such good work for me, I actually have a little offer that might interest you. How would you like to come and work for me on my campaign to be re-elected as mayor? I will think about it. I don't know. I'll think about it. I'll keep the job open we'll for you. Speak to the other it. lady first. I sure appreciate the extra. But help. before that, we're gonna go to Outpost Zumanja. So uh, yeah, let's do that then. Well, I fast travelled a bit, we're at Lake Quan something and as you can see, a bunch of angry Milocs, but yeah, I just wanted to <laughs> I don't know why I thought I'd drop back in just for this, but yeah, if you have uh, a weapon that has the explosive legendary effect. When you shoot it at water, it does this. 
Uh, well, all the way over there for some reason. Why is it... What? <laughs> Why is it doing over there? That is so far away from where I'm aiming. That's bizarre. There we go. It's like you're dropping a little depth charge in the water or something. I just think it's a really neat effect. Don't know what's going on with the aim though. Like, what? <laughs> I, I don't know, Fallout. I don't know. If I were one of those kind of uh, YouTubers, I'd, I'd have a ghostly image of uh, Todd Howard flitting across the screen with the whispered words, it just works in the background, but yeah. That sounds like hard work, you guys. Actual editing, nah, let's not do that. Now, I did mention last time, Sim Settlements 2 being one of the primary reasons why I actually uh, started this entire new uh, playthrough, and uh, this is going to be one of the settlements that is using an SS2 plan so we'll see what it looks like because it's been a little while since I've been here so this is outpost Zimonja and I'm bringing some weapons to a guy here there's a floating dog there's uh, what even is that that is an attack dog there's a weirdly close set of um, like there's a thing down there where this like, lone raider spawns and uh, it's a bit, I don't know, it's a bit odd, it always felt to me that that was a bit weirdly close to the actual settlement. Well, let's take care of, look this way, I'll just... There we go. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know, that's slightly odd game design and it does kind of emphasize how squashed together the game world feels in some areas. It's not actually that big of a map, I mean they've done a, a reasonable job of of making it feel like there's a decent amount around the place, but yeah, it's, uh, I remember reading it's only like a couple of kilometers across or something like that. Are you Mike's guy? Anyway. Have you got the stuff? The, the stuff. So, <laughs> the impression Mike was handling the place. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, so I'll give you a bit of extra caps on the side, sure. I've got it right here. Great. Come on, hand it over quick. Okay, so let's just return to Mike. But before we do that, let's have a little look around. This is, I think, still a level zero settlement, so it's not done its first upgrade yet. And uh, yeah, I think the only thing that's slightly out of the ordinary is this uh, logistics terminal, which is one of the ways that you can uh, uh, actually connect your settlements up. In fact, if I bring up the, uh, the the map and it's left bumper, it says all my connected settlements and it actually tries to connect them in the most logical path. You still have to assign a person to work at it, and there is also the option of uh, using a caravanier building to connect settlements but they seem to have a much more strict distance limit so uh, you have to chain your settlements in a way that you don't necessarily have to do with the vanilla game one thing i can't figure out is if this is completely replaced uh, how vanilla provisioners work because i tried assigning some just uh, on the off chance uh, that, that it would do something, and it didn't seem to. Uh, I have actually done the... Uh, well, you can see from Ava, uh, if you haven't guessed somehow, that I've done the Mechanist Lair, and I've, I've you know, got that now as a, a potential area to build in, and I've been trying to connect it up, but it doesn't seem to be close enough to anything, so maybe I have to chain it to Taffington and Finch Farm and... Uh, then it'll hook up? I don't know, but that's clearly just a bit too far from Hangman's Alley and uh, Home Plate, which is uh, the real mod counted as a settlement in terms of uh, supply lines. Now we do have another area we can go. Uh, there is this guy, Gutter Garfunkel. Oh, I do need to close that. Who is way down in Monsignor Plaza. 
is right near Green Tech. Let's fast travel down there. Presumably he is in the building. We'll go and see if we can uh, find him and return with this bounty completed as well. Oh, we are. Wow, we are straight into a fight. <laughs> yeah, this thing has a slightly ridiculous rate of fire. Well, it's using 38 ammo, so uh, yeah, as fast as we chew through it. Oh, hello. I can barely see. Yeah, we have some uh, interestingly irradiated weather going on right now. As, as you can tell from the tinge, this is plasma infused, so sometimes I just get random bits of uh, uh, finger me. Nuclear material. Uh, that was all the corpses, was it? Uh, stick packs, stick packs always useful. And I think there's an explosive box. Oh no, it's not. Well, kind of actually, there's a cryo mine, but I've, I've not been using mines much. I don't tend to, to, to be honest. Right, let's go see if we can find who we're supposed to take care of. There should be a reasonably familiar location to anyone that's played the game before. I don't think I've actually been in here so far in this playthrough. I've not had a reason to. I mean, obviously it's full of raiders and loot, but uh, yeah. So are many other places. What the? Who's there? Oh, hello, Raider. <laughs> Man, why did I wait so long to use automatic weapons? I mean, even without mods and um, pistols that have an alarmingly high rate of fire. It's just, they're so good. And even, uh, you know, weapons that use weak types of ammunition like .38. Just, uh, like, you spit the bullets out quick enough that it doesn't really matter. Of course, then you end up using a lot of bullets, because the individual bullets aren't doing a lot of damage, but, uh, yeah. I do wonder if there's some kind of magazine or something in here, maybe. I don't know. I don't think there's a bobblehead or anything in this location. Right, where's the guy we need to kill? That's where we came in, right? I would, I would maybe not want to trust an elevator with, you know, suit power armor, especially not an elevator that's two hundred years old. But hey, this game is as much fantasy as uh, Skyrim in its own way. Uh, oh, right, we just had to open that door ourselves. Hello? Up, well, that's just rude. Did your mother not teach you any language manners? Language manners, that's that's a thing. Yes. Uh, do, 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 do. Where is the guy? What is that? Oh, the workbench. That's outside. There's a wrecked Mr. Handy there. I'll take that stuff. Some actually nice loot here. Why didn't I come here previously? I don't know. Because reasons. Right, he's in here somewhere. I just need to, you know, find him. Isn't there another staircase up somewhere? Here. <laughs> right, I remember that being a terminal where the guy is like, Don't touch my terminal, noobs. Downside of this is a little uncontrollable. There we go. Garfunkel's locket. That's what we're after. And indeed some nuclear material. Ordinarily, I would 
pick up a bunch of the armor and guns and just like strip them down into pieces as well, but uh, yeah, I don't really need to do that. Oh! Was that... did I just blow my own legs off? Excellent. I'm quite bad at, at, at noticing mines. Like a lot of playthroughs, I take the um, the perk that means you can just not ever trip mines or uh, trip wires or anything like that. And of course, I haven't done that this time round. So I'm just uh, walking across all the mines and continually blowing the legs off my power armor, which gets a bit expensive considering that it's uh, expensive power armor to repair. It was good old just bog standard T45. It wouldn't be such an issue, but uh, yeah. Anyway, right. Uh, I don't think I need to keep narrating through all this bit because it's just me lot picking, and going outside, and waiting for the loading screen. So, yeah, let's let's head back to Fourville and uh, see what's what. Right. So let's go speak to what's his face. Uh, which is over here somewhere, if I remember correctly. The guns guy. Oh, he's actually indoors at the moment. Well, that's fine. Let's just rudely barge in without knocking. Uh, oh, okay there. Um... This is not what I was expecting. He's doing a bit of his own excavation, it would seem. I'm back in the morning, and we can talk. I, but you, I, so, okay, okay. Very strict about business hours, clearly. <laughs> See if we can at least turn in the other one, and then we might have to find somewhere to sit down and skip ahead sometime. Right. So the other one uh, was the bounty. And I've walked around the wrong way for that, haven't I? So let's go there. If you see a crime, report it. <laughs> sure thing, Roscoe. Sure thing. I have to say, of all the areas of the city, I think the uh, Roscoe is such a hard ass. The the oh, guard's like office that. seems like, it doesn't quite fit somehow. It's this weirdly it open works, plan, it and it it's like, where do they keep their stuff? Where are the cells? Where do they keep their, you know, racks of guns and and armor and whatnot? Like it's it's a bit, I don't know. It feels kind of a bit half formed. I got the job done. <clears throat> I got the job done. Gunnar Garfunkel was flashing that locket round everywhere he went. He seemed mighty proud of it for some reason. Here's your pay. If you want another bounty, you come and ask. Okay. So we can pick up multiple bounties. I might as well talk to her just now. I don't know how many I will actually do. So I take it there's a Oh that's a <laughs> That's an interesting camera angle. People always come round here trying to cause trouble. We can't always keep them out. Let's see who's next on my list. Oh, this one's a bad one. Thankfully she didn't get in. But she did kill one of our gate guards. Big Mops her name is? I think it might supposed to be intimidating, but I don't really understand. Yeah, you and me both. Big. Roscoe's such a hard ass. Why don't you big mops. People were security is here for you. Right, so I'm gonna have to pop out for a second. And yes, that is the lieutenant's hat from uh, doing uh, the uh, the USS Constitution quest which is quite a fun one right so we need to wait for a couple of hours apparently right Mike proprietor of guns 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 very imaginative name let's see what you have to say hi what do you need I got the job done good work here's your money if you want to run another job you just let me know Okay, so this is just going to be another repeatable do. request. Same as before. Take the guns of the buyer, then I don't know if it's going to go anywhere, but, you know, we'll see if it escalates into something more. Bunker Hill. Okay. 
But what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to talk to the mayor's opponent, Miss Mackenzie, who is over here apparently. What's up? It's, I, every time I walk past, yeah, that placement's a little bit awkward. Like, that just seems like an awkward place to hang out anyway, because there's an alarming hole in the floor there. And, uh, and then on top of that, they're somehow clipping through that light because, uh, yeah. It's just a little bit awkward. Just a tiny bit. Right, well, this is, uh... It's certainly a place. Hi. I hear Wayne has had you doing election work for him. I'm not about to let my opponent get an advantage over me. No matter how small. Okay, that's weirdly quiet. So here's my offer. I'll pay you 1,000 caps right now if you'll work for me as an election agent. What do you say? I mean, that's a lot of caps. What would be expected of me if I joined? Well, I would expect you to do what I tell you to do. You will be helping me remove that clown, Wayne, from office so Forville can have a competent mayor. That's me, in case you couldn't tell. I only want what's best for this town. Wayne Sanders isn't it. I mean... So, okay, I'm guessing there's, there's two alternate paths here. I can work for her or I can work for him. Well, a thousand caps is a lot of caps. All right. So, Very good. sure, Here's let's see money. what she There's has no me doing. Wasting time. I may as well start you right away. You're going to make me assassinate him, because I would be okay with that. I need you to put up these oh, election, election posters, posters. okay. Town. Fine, make that's sure good too. you put them in prominent positions. I need them to actually be seen. Alright. Seems like something she could have done herself, but, uh, you know, for a thousand caps, sure. Quests. Posters. Where do you want me to put up the posters? Just... just everywhere, sure. That's, uh... uh okay, sure. It's, it's, uh, bold, I suppose. Doesn't quite say how she's going to do it, but, you uh, you know. Reported. Politicians, am I right? Or something, I don't know. That was a vague attempt at being topical. I mean, don't get me started on... Uh, <laughs> I don't even want to think about Boris Johnson right now. I really don't. I mean, not that anyone ever really truly wants to think about him, but... Uh, yeah. Alright, this is going up in... Ah, uh, yes... Yeah, there's actually two entrances in the bunkhouse, which is quite uh, nifty. Although it seems like it would be a terrible place to sleep if anyone could just come wandering through. Let's see. One there. And that one's going to be above us somewhere. That one also looks to be above us. So one thing the marker system does not do is tell you if stuff is uh, Fire guns from someone who knows how to use them. Me. Above or below or whatever. Which considering this is quite a vertical settlement, right, there's one there in the bar. I wonder if the other one is like in the museum, maybe? Report it. There's one, and then there's only one more, I think. There's guns in the Commonwealth. Oh, am I just doing a loop at this point? Yes, this is where we started off. Right, it's not in. Wait, is there one in the bar itself? Did I miss that marker? I guess I did. Yeah, yeah, we completely walked past it. Okay, there we go. Well, 
Right, let's see what she has to say. The posters are up. Good. Now I have Now do we start kneecapping people? For you to do. Tell me, how much do you know about Vault 4? Uh, tell me, tell more. me more about this vault. The vault is a testament to everything that's wrong with this town. The misguided belief that it will open one day has been holding this town back. There's only one thing you really need to know. The whole idea that the vault will open one day comes from George Willis, the first man to pitch a tent in the cave. You can see a monument to his foolishness deified at the steps of the vault door. Wayne's belief in Willis's ideas have been the spearhead of his campaign for mayor, keeping the people trapped in a stagnating town while he coasts on their misplaced optimism. The only way to move forward as a town is to banish the ghost of Willis, to force Wayne to debate the real issues. I mean, that doesn't I sound entirely unreasonable. And find a way to discredit him. Is this really necessary? Of course. Wayne's obsession with this vault has led to an incalculable waste of resources, both in what he has done and what he has left undone. I'll get right on it. Very good. I would recommend starting with Willis's terminal in the museum. There may be some information there that we can use. Okay, somehow we have to uh, get on that terminal then. interesting to see what we find I have no idea if you ever do find uh, what is in vault 4 if that's always just a complete mystery I mean it would be uh, sort of amusing if it opened up and then it was just you know so there was nothing behind the door kind of thing Right, so how do we get on there without this guy going and uh -uh. Yeah, there's a an impenetrable velvet rope in the way. <laughs> it's weird how the game does that sometimes, it just teleports you. Okay. Uh Mr. G Willis. I wonder if there's extra stuff if you log in as an admin. Right, so there's a whole bunch of text. Uh, so he's thought about starting a thing. This is obviously before the uh, the bombs fell. Received a rejection letter from Vault 4. Okay. And he liked to go boating, and he was in the army. I don't know if the typos are on on uh, on purpose, if they're deliberate, but yeah, I won't sit and read out the whole things. But you know, if you you're absolutely desperate, you can uh, pause the video and, and uh, take a look. I'm just kind of skimming over myself. So this is just immediately in the aftermath of the bombs one thing that's always bugged me and again this is this is thinking about the game from some kind of even vaguely sci-fi perspective as opposed to just a different type of fantasy is that that an awful lot of electronics survived all of these EMP blasts produced by all of these nuclear bombs falling it, it's uh, yeah, it's a little bit strange. So, uh, some people are showing up and... Uh, I guess it's just the kind of the, the starting up of the community. But things obviously weren't exactly uh, peachy in the immediate aftermath of nuclear annihilation. Strange that. This was clearly a, a sort of semi-safe space from the majority of the fallout at least. 
Okay. So he was fairly, or at least the public diary entries show him being fairly instrumental in this place being turned into an actual community. Okay. We will hold up for a while. No idea how place the uh, how big the place was when they started, but uh, must have been considerably smaller. Going by the the size of the uh, the access tunnels you see in the other vaults, the anti chambers, whatever you want to call them. Okay, is someone turning into a ghoul, maybe? Uh, town hall... Uh, yeah, that does sound like somebody turning into a ghoul. There's a fair few of these. They took everything except the Robco family terminal. Oh, I see. So this wasn't all typed up on the terminal. Like, okay, so we were scribbling it down, and then somebody else typed up it onto the terminal later on. So, yep, he's a ghoul. In fact, she skipped from seventeen to twenty there. First baby in Fourville. So, not all diary entries are in. Makes me wonder if we go in the admin menu if we'll find something. So that all sounds very peachy and hunky dory, but there are notably some missing entries. So what have we got? We've got eight, and then uh, 18, 19, 21, and 22 are all missing. So that's five missing entries. So if we create uh, archive files, admin password required. So I can create a new profile. We cannot. So if we get the admin profile, or the admin password, presumably we can find out what those are. Yep, velvet rope, the strongest force in the universe. Not even a suit of power armor can get through a velvet rope. I hope you're keeping out of trouble. I... what? Ada... Okay. Yeah. Sometimes companions just like to randomly teleport around the place and uh, break their legs. Right, is that downstairs? I guess that's downstairs. It's always tempting to jump down, but uh, in fact, I'll do a quick save and jump down and uh, I think I know what will happen. Nothing! Nothing happened! Okay, was that not a uh, high enough distance for it to count as a... I have no idea! I have no idea, game. Right, it wants me to go outside. Oh, into Salem. Oh, I see. Okay, sure. A little trip into Salem. I've not uh, done the little Salem quest either, the guy with the Mylurks and the turrets. But I don't know if we'll do that. I think I just want to find out what these hidden diary entries are and then see what comes next after that. So we're pretty close to Salem, as you can see. I mean, the, the vault is literally right just across from Salem. And uh, it's actually quite a nice view of the town, although the, uh, the LOD... Uh, <laughs> Uh, smushing. I don't know what the technical technical term is for when you have the. Hey, there we go. It's popping in the higher detail models. Yeah, the, the the smushing doesn't necessarily look that great at a distance. Oh, hello. What have you found? A mutant hound. An ex mutant hound. Right. So let's go see what we can see. And, uh, 
Yeah, I shouldn't run into anything too egregious, but yeah, that's one of the uh, the things you can run into. Or one of the what's his face's um, things. Now this is I've, I've found this a couple of times with Fourville residences where they've taken an existing house that I guess has an interior and uh, it doesn't look like you can lead in and pick stuff up through the windows but if we go through the door it will look completely different <laughs> so yeah I, I think that's that's a bit of a a glitch that that, that could do with fixing it, it definitely is slightly immersion breaking suddenly oh look Bunch of survivor raid lists. Uh, right, I'm uh, given that we're indoors. Uh, oh, that's a useful ammo. Yeah, um. These sound. seem like nice people. And also, this house is way bigger. Way, way bigger. Oh, do I not have any uh, throwables? Apparently not. Molotov, that do. Yes, I am throwing a Molotov at the dog. It's fine. He likes it. Keeps him warm. Oh, you're a legendary robot. That's not missing. Pew, pew, pew. It would probably be quicker using the C93 to be quite honest, but I do like to get a bit of a variety with my weapons going. There we go. I wonder if you had anything interesting. Uh, oh, no, that's the wrong one. No. Explosive. Okay, explosive is always fun. Yeah, that's, that was like using a controller, as if you hold it down slightly too long, sometimes you throw a grenade when you actually meant to uh, uh, not <laughs> throw a grenade. Right. Is that everybody taken care of? Yeah, this house is way bigger on the inside than the outside. That's, that's a little bit silly. There's also still people around somewhere. Disappearing act. <laughs> huh? Ooh, Luca Cola. Chained on the other side. Ah, okay. You'd think I could just push that out the way, given that I'm in freaking power armor, but you know, the game doesn't work like that. Even a little bit. And yes, I do have the uh, the thing that electrocutes people when they're too close, which is quite fun. Right. Is there anything else up here? Are they supposed to be sails? I don't quite... It's like huge bolts of cloth. That's slightly weird. Uh, what grenades will take? Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that texture is slightly wigging out, but it's fine. So, uh, just happened to keep his password on a post-it note that survived 200 years, alongside all the other things that survived for 200 years. Why not? So, uh, yeah, back to the vault we go. You see a crime? Report it. So this is what happens if you accidentally fall off the thing. Uh, everyone gets a bit mad at you. Um, 
Oops. <laughs> Let's load that again. So let us once again go over the impenetrable rope. Because you can't go through it, that would be silly. Unless you teleport. Right, so, uh, archive files. Ah, uh, that's way more entries than I thought there would be. Okay. Edited version. Some entries were deleted altogether. Ah, so we get to see the edited highlights. These are all of the originals. It was an idea that created this settlement, and it is an idea which has kept it together. For as long as we have lived in these caves, we have lived with the idea that the vault would open one day, that our friends and family would come out, and that we would be given shelter alongside them. Hmm. I long ago lost my faith in Vault 4. Why would they open it when they could live in perfect comfort forever inside? Okay, so in other words, you know, they built this guy up as being, uh, you know, the, the guiding father figure of the entire thing. And uh, in reality, he was a little more complicated than that. So we'll see what it says. Twenty-one, twenty-six? Question mark. So he lived... Well, we don't know how old he was in 2077. But uh, he lived for a good few years after that, apparently. So let's have a look-see. And again, I won't read out these whole things. I will let you pause to read the, uh, the things yourself as I'm skimming over. Okay, so that was the older fellow that turned up. I didn't think he'd ever see his family again. So it seems like his wife had way more influence over things than the uh, edited versions and the local history. Seems to, uh, yeah. And this Francis fellow as well. Oh, this was the marketing executive guy, it was Francis. Okay, I'm just putting that together somehow. Wow, this is turning out to be quite a different version. Okay, so the marketing guy was the one that came up with calling it Fourville and was elected as the first mayor. And he was uh, made his deputy. I'm guessing we had a falling out. Right. So he was working on something. was getting a bit obsessive about it. And one thing the official version of the history doesn't really cover is this kind of uh, cult slash church that has sprung up around the, uh, the place. Uh, ah! Yeah, okay. So, uh, he went to confront Francis and Francis attacked him and uh, George Willis defended himself 
And that was that. Buried his body in the foundations. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so people just kind of forgot? Weird. And he, by default, became the mayor and... Uh, Thus, history was rewritten. It's an interesting notion. I mean, it's the kind of thing where people would have to, like, almost deliberately want to forget. <sighs> Ada, you are very silly. It's just attention seeking, that's what it is. Also, I've realised that I have allied myself with the person with the Scottish name. Which seems somehow right proper. Right, so. Four Wheels Dirty Secret. Let's see what she reacts. Or how she reacts. Do you have any information on Willis? Yes. Here you go. Excellent. Let's see your secrets, Willis. This is fascinating. Willis lost faith in the vault and edited his diaries to cover it up. And to top the whole thing off? He murdered someone. This information will go down a treat at the final hustings of the The murder part is pretty arguable. In the meantime, I thought it would behoove you to get to know some of the residents a little better. It was better. clearly self-defense. Although, I'd having like said that, you know, by his own words it was self-defense. Do we believe that? I mean, it seems plausible, but yeah. Right, so... Uh, that is then just... Okay, there's just do the two repeatable things and then the hustings start. Well, I think we'll end things there then. Uh, clearly, there are uh, alternate ways that this can go based on who you choose to help. So there's a bit of replayability here, which is nice. Uh, and there's also some repeatable quests where you can get a decent amount of XP and... Um, yeah, I, I will definitely be playing this uh, until completion. I'm curious to see if you ever do get to see what's inside Vault 4 or if that just comes kind of besides the point, as it were. So, uh, as Pearl has time, you can find the link to the Nexus Mods page down below. And if you have any questions about any other mods that I'm using, feel free to ask as well. But uh, based on what I've played, yeah, I can definitely recommend this one. It's it's uh, quite engaging so far, and it's uh, a neat little location and uh, a nice thing that's been added to the wasteland, even if there's a bit of jank to go along with it. So that is it for Fourville. Hopefully you have found this entertaining, and if you have, you can do all the usual things down underneath the video. And of course, as always, stay tuned for more. And one of the great things about having a fully dynamic game engine is all of this just works.